Hello everyone, I'm Ross and my project was a lane swimming assistive device for blind people. What I aim to achieve in this presentation is to sh share what I've learned, the experiences I went through and uh, my opinion of what should be occurring in the future past this, past this project. So I'd like to start off by mentioning what exactly is an assistive device. Uh, you may have heard of activities for daily living or ADLs. It's a point score system that refers to people's ability to perform everyday self-care activities, such as brushing your teeth, as an example. Um, you, you've probably heard of quite a lot of assistive device devices, the, the hearing aids, assist with communication, um, wheelchairs, mobility, uh, glasses, they assist with reading, um, and they all kind of aim to increase independence, which is a recurring theme throughout my entire presentation. Another point to mention is that we're solely focused on types of visual impairments, but for this project we're focusing on individuals that have a complete loss of vision. They're unable to perceive light or colour at all in any eye. So before I start, I'd like to make some quick points on the how, how this community kind of feels that their image is in society. Kind of feels that their image is in society. Uh, explaining to colleagues that my project is a lane assisted device to blind people, a recurring theme that came up was that they had never really thought about it, it's not something that they ever considered and I'll admit that I didn't either uh, but, I, I, feel, but I, I feel like this is kind of symbolic of the treatment that the community has undergone. I think raising awareness for this community would be just a small step to change quite a lot of lives. And you can see here, uh, if you look at the stats, that um, it's more desperate to think. Vision is highly important for ADLs and the enjoyment of life. Um, so it's pretty understandable that vision loss would have a profoundly negative effect on mood. So you can think about the sheer effect that this has on you. If you, if you wake up, walk to the kitchen, if you try and find your cereal, try and find your cereal, uh, but maybe your flatmate moved the cereal box so you can't find the cereal box. So the box that you might think is your cereal box, uh, it could end up being something that nobody wants, something like bran flakes, you know, yeah, nobody wants that. So it, it's these kind of little struggles that all actually seriously can affect an individual's mental well-being. I found a recent study that concluded that a third of legally blind patients were depressed. Um, a main factor of this is that visually impaired and blind people lose their independence and assistive technologies aim to combat that. To combat that. A, in the scope of this project, I believe that creating a well thought out assistive device in lane swimming would create an attraction to exercise or to swimming. And exercise has been proven to be a combatant against depression. But unfortunately, there's no current effective assisted device that enables blind people to be able to swim. There are devices out there, uh, but unfortunately they're not quite that high tech. Um, the current device is a, a ball on a stick that uh, as a swimmer approaches, uh, a tapper, as they're called, taps the, on the head of the swimmer and they know that they're approaching the end. Um, if you look at this picture, I, I I actually love this image. Uh, if you if you look closely, you can see the the, the kid has his tongue sticking out. Mm. So we were talking about independency earlier. It's all quite apparent that uh, the swimmer is not independent here, and uh, it draws attention. So I can imagine some people would find that amusing uh, if someone's being tapped in the head by by a ball on a stick. There are some companies out there that have tried to replace this. Um, Samsung, the official place this. Um, Samsung, the official sponsor of the Olympic Games, uh, they came up with an idea that a Bluetooth device that vibrates on the swimmer's head allows the swimmer to to know when they're approaching the wall. This is done by a coach. He just presses a button on his wrist, and the swimmer knows. Um, ambitious. I, 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 I thought it might have been a little bit unreliable. I know that Bluetooth is reflected off the water, uh, but there are systems out there that, that can penetrate water. Uh, it was just seemed a bit, the whole thing seemed a bit odd. It was four years ago, um, the Samsung blind cap, as it was called, 
It only produced 15, it only produced 15,000 searches. It's not really that popular on Google. Maybe we'll see something in the next Olympic Games. I'm not sure. A, a, a good point that they made out here eh, eh, is that the Paralympic Games made plane swimming a sport 60 years ago, and the system still hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. Samsung aren't the only ones that have tried. Eh, IBM have also tried. You, IBM are definitely groundbreakers in innovation. Eh, they hold the world record in the most US patents for 26 years in a row. It's quite impressive. Uh, they tried to design a system, however, it didn't seem too good. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, it was a, a pole uh, stuck to either end of the pole, and a wire is connected to both of those poles. Um, there are beacons that are attached to the wires uh, at either end. You can see here, uh, there and a haptic device is uh, in the in the cap. So there's a device that vibrates. Uh, as the swimmer approaches the wall um, and uh, it gets more aggressive if they're off the center as well and as they approach the wall. The, again, I'm a bit suspicious in the video that they show, they only had the swimmer doing swims that involved the device being out of the water. So maybe it didn't work, I'm not too sure. Uh, but. I don't like this idea because of the swimmer has to have a lane to themselves and a, there, there is still a gap there in the middle that allows a swimmer to drift off and not stay within their guidelines. So in my opinion it wasn't perfect but in the end it didn't even matter. I think it was more of a peer stunt. If you search for IBM's Body of the Blind you get 2.5 million search results on Google. So they certainly impressed a lot of people here. So after careful consideration, I came up with a specification of my own. Uh, I believe that if a device followed the specification, it would be perfect. Uh, uh, the important ones to mention are that the stroke should not be impeded, it should not draw attention, and it should position the swimmer in the lane. I think it would be perfect because individuals would be able to take up the sport with ease and it would create more of an exciting entertainment experience that they can enjoy themselves independently. So here's all my ideas. Presentation, I'm only going to talk about four. I believe that uh, they fit, they're the four that best kind of fit the spec. So let's just talk about the first one. This idea is probably the simplest or the easiest. It's a pipe on the bottom of the pool and air is blown through the pipe and out of the holes that make bubbles, uh, as, you, uh, as you can see in the photos. These bubbles are felt by the swimmer and this spatial feel will be given to the swimmer based on just the tactile feel of the bubbles. So the swimmer will be able to tell where they are just based on the feel. But I was curious to find out if you would be able to. So I ran a bath, pumped the air through a garden hose that I punctured some holes through I weighed the whole hose down by dumbbells and in the video here you can vaguely tell where the bubbles are. I dipped my hand in and I could feel where the line of bubbles were pretty easily. In fact, uh, I could feel myself kind of being able to tell when I was close to the air curtain. It's kind of similar to the effect of if you were in a jacuzzi. But of course this wasn't full scale. So I began to test for full scale models. I designed something that could be placed inside the pool. pool. I calculated different pressures that I could have tested by using a rho GH. I found that the pressure at one meter would be uh, roughly 1.5 psi. So I came up with different psi's to observe what would happen. I thought about different diameters of holes as well. I thought that maybe smaller diameters would give better jets but I thought maybe bigger holes would give a more of a, a haptic response you'd be able to feel them a lot better but I measured them all I drilled out the holes in the tuck lab I sealed the end of the holes by folding it over I wrapped a hose clip on it tied it as much as I could filled the end with hot glue and glue and got the all clear from Stevenson building but then COVID-19 happened. Uh, yeah, 
it, uh, it kind of put a spar in the works. Um, but maybe in the future, someone will get the chance to test it out. Well, hopefully. Anyway. Yeah. My second idea was to create beacons on the lane ropes that emit sound and give spatial awareness to swimmers. Um, the lane ropes are already present, so it would be nice to modify them in some way. Uh, my thought process was to have Arduinos uh, that are connected to a power line that have speaker nodes attached to them. Um, it's similar to that of surround sound. Like you, you'd be able to work out where you are just by listening to the sounds around you. My main testing uh, would be to kind of work out how sound is attenuated in water. If if the speakers were placed inside these pods, the sound would have to travel from air into the plastic case and the plastic case into water. I thought of ways to overcome this. You could fill the pod with something like resin, uh, so you would limit the sound traveling in air or, or gas. So it would mostly just, uh, I thought about maybe you could change the frequency. You can find the different responses and different frequencies. There are, are also problems like safety. However, having electricals close to water can be seen as maybe a, a safety risk. My next idea is some, my next idea is something that I thought was quite exciting. As you can see in this animation here, a, a target is guided from point A to point B by communicating with uh, Bluetooth beacons. So my thought is that if we had a target with a magnitude and a phase, it's perfect for you know what we want in our model. Or, you know what we want in our model, and these things can be quite accurate. You know they can be accurate to up to two centimeters even. The great thing is that if you had a predefined map, it allows the swimmer to be guided from the, the moment they leave the changing rooms to the entrance of the pool. And even when they go in, st they can still be guided. My last idea uh, was to have cameras that record a swimmer and use visual recognition software to be able to determine where they are. Uh, so the camera records a swimmer, it sends a this data to a laptop via Wi-Fi so it performs visual recognition and from using a predefined map you're able to pinpoint exactly where the swimmer is and send audio cues to the swimmer via Bluetooth. However, I didn't decide to go too deep into this. Uh, I, th I thought the idea of having a camera in a public space wasn't really a, uh, a appealing to the public. Um, it also, it doesn't increase the independency of the swimmer. Someone has to install these cameras, and if water got on the lens, which is quite common in swimming, it would produce inaccurate results. So finishing there, uh, what I would like to have done further uh, was to test the bubbles on a full-scale model, uh, test beacons at different frequencies, find out how small a device can be, and uh, find out if any of these ideas would make blind people take up swimming. Uh, ultimately, uh, if it doesn't, we really need to rethink our strategy. So once again, I'm Ross, thank you for listening, and if you have any questions,